did not think I was going to study abroad. I thought I'd kind of be stuck here for the next four years. And I didn't think it would be possible because I assumed study abroad would be super expensive you know, and out of, out of reach for me. We got to Heathrow Airport around maybe 7 o'clock in the morning. We did the Sherlock Holmes walking tour, actually on the same day as St. Patty's, which was the day that we arrived. But then all of a sudden we realized that since it's St. Patty's Day, the parade was blocking about maybe half of our tour. We are going to try the most ambitious tour guiding thing ever. Eventually we were like, you know, we're true New York Americans and we shoved our way through. When I was younger, I had the illest crush on Harry Potter and I thought he was so cute but then like getting older I was just like eh, he's whatever now and I thought myself more of a fan for Fantastic Beasts than I was for Harry Potter so when I was going to to Warner Brothers to see the Harry Potter set whatever I didn't expect to be as, as excited as I was because once I like got there I was just hit with this overwhelming feeling of nostalgia and it brought, to, brought me back to when I was a kid, like, oh my god, he's flying, oh my god. And then I started remembering, it was just like, I felt like a little kid again. And it was just like, oh wow, the memories that I've had. And I did get see myself get educated on how, like, the amount of work and dedication that everyone had put into the film as well. You can see the amount of hours they had put into the blueprints and the design. And then going to the last room, you see, you see Hogwarts right there in front of you. And you're just like, wow, all these like blueprints, these drawings, these paintings, all of that went into making this place. It was, it was pretty amazing to see. Today, we, we took the tube to uh, the Tower of London, which is an amazing fortress, oh my God. And we got to go around the fortress and we got to see the crown jewels of London. So when I found out that we were going to the Tower of London, I was so excited because I've always wanted to see a castle. The castle was built during the Norman invasion in 1066. And apparently, they have a torture chamber here, and this is where they have like the crown jewels and whatnot. And that was pretty okay, it was just shiny stuff. But like, I really wanted to go to the, the, the torture chamber. America is a very young country, and when we went to London, it's a very old city, and to actually go onto the Tower of London and to stand where like thousands of years of history have been was just really amazing. We crossed the Tower Bridge, and that was also fantastic. Like, I've wanted to do that for so long. I honestly love getting lost in other countries. It's way more liberating to be confused than to like have, you know, know where you're going. I went and saw the National Gallery and I saw Yves Van Eyck's 15th century masterpiece. We also got to see Da Vinci's artworks. We got to see Monet. It was, it was just wonderful. We had this Oyster card and we were able to hop on a train and just go to another part of London. And it was great to be able to travel so easily there. So we went to Abbey Road. Um, that was awesome. It, it was hard to get a picture there because it is an actual functioning road. You can write on a wall and then they'll paint over it in like two weeks. But it was just really cool to like go there and see where the Beatles were because I love the Beatles. I'm gonna get a tub shot and I'm gonna do something wild with it. But for now it's like, it's that. I go like that, you know? I wanted a birds on my forearm, but he gave me crows. And he said his tattoo shop that, that I was in was actually three to four houses down from where Alfred Hitchcock grew up. When we were on the dinner cruise boat, we were all up there dancing, which I thought was really funny. We, we started to dance with the live performer and it was pretty funny because we were the only Americans there and the only people dancing on the dance floor. And all the British people were kind of like more reserved and kind of just watching, like almost like they wished they were up there, but they couldn't go up there. So I was actually really happy about the, that as well. Like I'm like, wow, at least we know how to have like a little fun. And it was just, I don't know what we were doing. We just, 
It was a good night. <laughs> it was a good, it was a whole all around good day. Throughout the years, you always read a lot of Shakespeare's uh, stories and you always hear about the theater, but you never actually get to see it. So luckily I was uh, able to see it today and it was a reconstruction because the original was destroyed. All right, so this is actually the original site of the uh, Globe Theater where Shakespeare performed his plays. And the reason they can't excavate most of it is because there's a historic building built right on top of it and they can't rip that building down to uh, excavate the rest of the theater. So the reconstruction we saw earlier is the best they could do with what they had. I'm gonna be a history teacher in the future and seeing these historic sites in person gives me a chance to, when I'm actually teaching these students in the future, I can say, well, I was there and here's what I learned. And that just brings such value to me because if I can relate to that history, like, oh, I've been there, I've stepped where they stepped, it gives me such passion to like really study history. I hate heights. So um, Juliet kept telling me, it's like, oh, you'll be fine on the eye, you won't even notice. And I just kept looking at her with skepticism. <laughs> but my fear of height didn't stop me as too much to enjoy the scenery, which was amazing. Coronation Street has been on for over 60 years, I believe. They said they did about maybe three to four episodes a week, which is, I think, it's pretty insane. <laughs> they're constantly moving, they're constantly filming, they're constantly writing. There's no breaks on that train. Ever since high school, I knew that I wanted to be in, a, in the entertainment industry. I know how to do these things that are valuable, in the film industry, but I don't know where I want to focus. And going there and seeing a little bit of these people film and how they work, I think it had made me come to the conclusion that I, I truly enjoy editing more than uh, anything else on set. Just going to see their editing room, I honestly began geeking out, you know. While I was on set, I was just like, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay, I see. But I didn't truly geek out until I got to the office and I saw those rooms and I was just like, oh my God. In 10 years when I'm remembering this trip, I'll probably think of when me and my friend Andrew were kind of wandering around the city and just going down any alleyways we saw. It was just really cool to like explore the city. Studying abroad is just, it takes you to a whole new world. You know, it shows you and tells you things that you normally wouldn't know about if you stayed in the States. I get this other perspective of other countries and how they view the world, and that really helps me understand my major a lot more. I had a whole bunch of support from faculty to do it and to take this chance and risk to do something different and out of my element, and I thank them for that because I thought they was like, okay, so I can't do this, and I don't know how to do any of these things, like get a passport. There was just so many questions I had, and so many things I think I didn't think I could do, but then the staff, they really like sat down to talk with me. They went over the paperwork, they went over the itinerary with me. Traveling just now feels like almost second nature. Like I'm not as scared of it anymore. I know what I'm doing, and I know where I'm going. There are moments where I'm just like, I can think back on and like just smile at, you know? And I appreciate that. <laughs>